the Ford Excursion, is it the ultimate soccer mom mobile or is it the EPA's worst nightmare? Hi everybody, I'm Landon. Welcome to Shift Heads. It's a 2001 XLT 6.8 liter V10 two wheel drive. It's done just under 130,000 miles. The excursion came from early 2000 all the way up to late 2006, but in 2006, it was only produced for the Mexico market for some odd reason. Don't know why. Or at least that's what Wikipedia says. Who knows if that's true. So we'll get the boring stuff out of the way. These came with three different engines when they first came out, and it would be the 6.8 liter V10, the 7.3 liter diesel, which was King, and the 5.4 liter V8, which to us excursion enthusiasts is equivalent to having a redheaded stepchild. In 2003, Ford unveiled the 6 liter diesel V8, which was immediately plagued with issues. Many shops made a lot of money off of the 6 liter diesel, and they still do. The 5.4 liter and 6.8 liter engines early on in production came with a two valve and then later on were switched to a three valve design which was just as shitty. They came with both two wheel drive and four wheel drive. Trims included were XLT, Limited and the Eddie Bauer edition. 2005 model year got a facelift. Now the gas mileage in these, in my experience with this one, my V10 gets about as many miles to the gallon as it does seats, which is Eight. Some diesel owners are boasting upwards of 13 to 16 miles per gallon. Now, obviously your driving style is gonna differ and change that. Anyway, enough of the boring shit. Let's get to the fun part, the good things of owning this truck. Now, mine has a four inch lift, so it's pretty high up on the road, but even the stock factory suspension on these trucks makes you feel like the biggest thing on the road, aside from a semi truck. There are so many windows. You would think that a vehicle this size, visibility would be tough. And the only time it is, is when you're backing up. That's it. Mainly because the mirror is up here and the window is eight feet behind you and it's four feet off the ground. So you can't really see anything that's directly behind the truck. This one does have parking sensors, but they're broken. The Excursion has a second row and a third row, which we'll get to. And the second row offers this little fold-out guy that has these two little cup holders here that I personally have never used because I'm always in the driver's seat, but that's neither here nor there. And it does fold flat. However, there is a process to this whole thing. You take the headrest out, which can be tricky and, well, they didn't really give you anywhere to put this except for right here. And it's kind of a pain in the neck to do it with the seat the way it is. But if you just pull it back, set it in, it should, should go in. Mine's broken apparently. Now, the second part, fold this down, undo this bit, and there's this, which covers a foot well for the third row. I'll show you that in a minute. Ah, oh, well, would you look at that? I got this one to go in all the way. As you can see, here's the footwell for the third row. And you just pull this up. Flat floor right here. And some people, they, don't, they leave it like this as it is, and they just use this as a back seat so that the rear passengers have miles and miles of legroom. Now, the third row does fold down as well, and it's completely removable. However, some idiot back here decided to install subwoofers, big ones. They're loud, and I love them. Now to show you how this third row seat comes out, I'm gonna show you a picture of where the handle's at. And then all you gotta do is just pull that, pick it up, it tilts forward, and it slides right out. Now it does have a couple of wheels on the front legs that are connected into the truck, and it works just fine and dandy but this seat is extremely heavy, which is why I'm leaving it in. There are so 
many spots to just lose things, especially your kids. Cause I mean, you saw how big it was back there. You could lose them for days. You wouldn't see them for a while. Especially now with quarantine, you'd be like, oh yeah, they're just in the room playing video games. Nope, stuck in the back of the truck. We've got glove box, door pockets, two of them, two massive door pockets. You've got center console here. You've got a little storage bin there. You've got your taco holder here, garage door opener there. This one came with the DVD player and I do believe it's a factory system, but it doesn't work because I've got an aftermarket head unit in it. I mean, it's amazing. There's two cup holders here, two cup holders there, two in the rear seat that I told you about, two cup holders for the rear third row. And then you've got this flimsy some bitch that I wouldn't trust with more than a monster or a rock star. That's two more cup holders there. So we have a grand total of 10 cup holders for eight butts. It's insane. Now with the third row out and minus the speaker boxes, you can fit a lot of four by eight sheet of plywood back here. In fact, there's a whole lot of stuff that people have shoved back in here, which kind of makes the roof rack, which is really hard to get to, somewhat redundant. However, I leave the speakers in and the seat in because I've got a pickup truck for that. Now, I can't really speak from experience, but this V10 has got the torque to pull a house off of its foundation. And I'm sure the diesels are way better at it than this. I've pulled that travel trailer over there, picture, up a 6% grade for five miles and it didn't miss a lick. So is this the greatest vehicle ever made by man? I would say yes. However, there's some drawbacks. There's some drawbacks. Anyway, let's take a look at those. Now I'm six foot one and yes, mine's lifted four inches, but The rear hatch lift struts, change them. If you buy one, just change them out. Go for the four wheel drive model ones because they lift it up a little bit higher, especially if you're tall. Hitting your head on this thing is not fun. The weakest part of this truck is up under here and it's the transmission. Seems like every time I hook up the trailer, it's puking fluid out the front pump seal. But I'm hoping that upgrading to a better trans cooler will help solve that. It, it's got a 44 gallon tank. So every time you open this little door to fill it up, um, you're probably going to need to sell one of your children in order to afford it. Or an arm, or a kidney, or take out a second mortgage. I mean, 44 gallons. And I live in California. Oh. Now, mine's a California truck, so it doesn't know what the word rust is, but a common area for these to rust out, as you can see, there's a hole here. I do believe there's supposed to be some sort of rubber plug. Inside of here in these rocker panels, tends to collect moisture and rots out. And the first thing you're gonna notice when that happens is the running board's gonna fall off. So make sure if you're gonna buy one, look up underneath there, check it out for rust. It can be repairable, but it is expensive. If you get yours for the right price and you're not really too worried about it, there are these bits and pieces made in the aftermarket industry and they, send, they seem to do a good job, I think. Like I said, California, I don't know what rust is. A little bit more talk about rust. These trailer hitches, these big mother right here. These will rust out <clears throat> and you won't know until you hook your trailer up. So keep an eye on these here. And this area up here, ooh, it's spider webs and inside of here, because it will fall apart the second you put a trailer on it, and that's a bad day. Oh, also, fun fact, there's your, two, there's your 44 gallon fuel tank, all of it, right there. It's not two tanks, it's one tank, and it's back here, and it's not a saddle tank up there, back here. The taillights are shared with an E-Series van, so if you're looking for taillights for this thing, don't look for an F-250, look for the E-Series. E 
and there's not a whole lot for them. I mean, there's some cool looking ones out there, but they're a little pricey. Also, these barn doors, fiberglass, really difficult to find, and they crack easily. So, and they're not easy to repair either. So if you end up dinging one up, like I've done here with the trailer hitch and there with a trailer hitch, um, a good body man would get these fixed up, but it'd be a little pricey. Now, if I were to punch a hole in it, be looking for a replacement and uh, good luck. The door latches like to seize up a little bit. Uh, spraying them with some graphite or some WD-40 kind of helps keep them loosened up. But after a while, you will need to replace all five. Yes, there's five of these. One for the rear hatch, four for the doors. An another note that kind of annoys me, these are very easy to break into because all they got to do is just hammer a screwdriver in here hard enough, turn, and it unlocks the door. This, this thing. This is a keypad that you can push little buttons on and it should unlock the doors. My problem is, is I don't know what the code is. And apparently it's hidden somewhere in this truck. But there's also another way. There's a sheet of paper you can print out on the internet and it's got a series of numbers and you push it in that succession and eventually it'll unlock the doors and you just remember the last five digits you hit and that's it. And then you can set your own code from there if you have the factory code and you understand what's going on. Or you can take it down to Ford, make a friend and just have them pull the code from the computer. Simple as that. These are aftermarket headlights and they suck. I can't see anything at night. However, the stock ones aren't any better. So if you're gonna get some headlights, do your research, find a good decent pair. Some LEDs would definitely make this truck just shine the road down in front of it, which you're gonna need because the brakes on these things, sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. <laughs> and what I mean by that is in certain parts of the country, one of the rear brake lines likes to pop. Uh, so once you get yours, if you do end up buying one, have the brakes inspected, all of the lines, the rubber components, uh, check the, have the calipers checked out, make sure that the pistons inside the calipers aren't cracked. Just double check everything on the brakes because this truck weighs almost 8,000 pounds. And that's not something you wanna have to where it can't stop. Mm -mm. This uh, trim work is held on by double-sided tape and on mine it's falling off like crazy pretty much all over the truck. I mean, we'll just take a little right here. You can see that one's gonna fall off. This one's holding on pretty good. This one's about ready to just kick the bucket entirely. And we come over to the bad side. Oh yeah, this one hits every time I open the door. Every time I open the door, this one hits and probably just gonna end up taking this trim off and do some Raptor liner or something with it. Oh, and if you take this back trim piece off, there's a series of holes behind here that will just make it look really ugly. So you wanna think about getting those filled in, do some body work. So with all of the cons, should you buy one? Yes, <laughs> because since this truck is based, on an F-250 platform and Ford didn't really change a whole lot between 1998 and 2016. There are so many different possibilities. There's guys out there that have swapped over the interiors. I mean, the whole thing, dashboard, seats, carpet, center consoles, everything. This truck never came in a King Ranch. The Excursion never had the King Ranch package, but there's some guy out there that did it. He switched the whole front end too to match the fenders. He went and got a 2013 front end, different fenders, different hood, different lights, different bumpers, different wheels, all of that. He made it look like it was a 2013 excursion when in reality, it was a 7.3 liter diesel from 2003. I mean, that's amazing. And they look incredible. There's a company out in Texas that you could go and buy a 2015, 2016 F-250, give it to them and they'll turn it into an excursion. So you have the 6.4 liter diesel, you have the 6.7 liter diesel option, you could have the new 5.8, the 6.2 liter gas, the, the possibilities of these trucks are endless. 
And like I, there's such a huge aftermarket following that getting parts for these, the whole, it's really not that difficult other than the barn doors and the taillights. But if you switch that over to say a later style of 2010, 2012, 2013, up and so forth, it works great. It's amazing. These best truck in the world ever, hands down, period. I love this truck. Yeah, it's got paint peeling and the clear coat's coming off, but you know what? A little bit of money, get it repainted. It'll look like a brand new truck. A hell of a lot cheaper than a brand new truck payment too. So I say, go for it, buy it. Now, normally I would like to take this truck for a drive, show you what it rides like, show you what it's like to drive, but essentially it drives just like a really big pickup. And how are you gonna know what it drives like from my video? Because like I said earlier, there's so many upgrade options. You can even change the springs on these things to ride completely different. So in essence, you really just gotta go out and test drive one. The rest is history. I found this online, bought it, and uh, I kind of neglected it a little bit because of the 44 gallon fuel tank. But then again, my commute was 100 miles a week back then, and then it went to 100 miles a day. So I needed something a little bit more fuel efficient, which is why I bought a Ranger. The only way you're gonna know if you love this truck is if you go and drive one. Try it out. And be warned, there are some really, really bad ones out there and they're asking way too much money for it. So, what I recommend is shop around, find the greatest deal, don't pay too much. Why is it broken, Landon? Why is it broken? Cylinder three has decided to go on strike, okay? I don't know if it's because the piston rings or if it's because the valves are bent. I don't. I have the slightest idea. But what I really want to do is put a Dodge in here. <laughs> the Cummins. Oh, I'm terrible, aren't I?